What's some recent news stories that have all happened within the last couple of weeks? So Google said originally that the new version of Android, so Lollipop, was going to encrypt everything by default, so they're going to use um, full disk encryption. Um, they've changed their stance on that now, and they are still planning to do that in the future, <coughs> but it's not in this um, the, the versions that are coming up, the next versions or anything that will be further in the future. And it's partly to do with all the different um, people that provide um, Android, because obviously it's a fragmented system where there are all different um, companies that provide their own kind of branded versions of Android. So not all of them and not all of the devices and drivers and everything are, are compatible or some of them are quite slow at the moment. So they're not pushing that by default yet, but hopefully they will soon. Um, as far as I'm aware, Apple have already moved to, I believe the newest version of iOS already does encrypt everything by default. Um, so that makes things much better from a privacy point of view when they do encrypt everything um, by default, but also it does make law enforcement kind of forensic investigations a little bit harder because it's, you know, in order to get that actual information off the device, if it's been encrypted with an actual good passphrase, then it becomes impossible pretty much to get that off. Freak is a um, vulnerability that happened um, recently. Essentially, this vulnerability has been around for a really long time. Um, and the reason it exists is because computers are designed to be compatible with each other, right? So if you use um, SSL encryption, there's like this negotiation that happens between the server and the client about what type of encryption to use. And for backwards compatibility, they still include some really broken encryption methods. So um, there's export grade encryption from back in the day when the US had these controls um, on export of encryption. And it used to be that you had to have like quite uh, weak encryption um, so that the, basically, so that the US government could crack any of the encryption that was used. Those laws no longer exist at the moment and anyone thinking of bringing in similar laws are, um, should be questioned on that. Um, obviously there's cur current politics involved that you might be aware of um, in the UK. But basically, it, you know, it's a good idea to have strong encryption because it keeps everyone secure. Um, and because there are these weak versions of um, algorithms that are available, an attacker can basically do a man in the middle attack force both ends to be using a weak encryption, break that encryption, and then they have control over the connection. So this has this is a quite a major flaw that's been around for a really long time, and it's been fixed. Uh, you know, Microsoft, Apple, pretty much all the major vendors have been affected by this um, vulnerability, so it's currently um, being patched. Rowhammer is like a really interesting vulnerability. So it's very, very clever because it's a vulnerability in the hardware rather than the software. So basically, dynamic random access memory, so DRAM, um, there's this, the way that it acts is if you continually access and modify a um, section of memory, eventually, because the transistors are so close nowadays, because they build these things so small, it leaks over to um, you know, the next piece of information and can change it. And the really interesting thing about that is Google um, security researchers at the um, Project Zero project, they have shown that they can actually do a major, like use this as a security vulnerability. So by doing a single bit flipping attack, they could escalate privileges on a computer. So it's very, very clever. Um, and the, the technical detail is they managed to um, do bit flips in, in the page table entries, which basically allows them to control um, their own page table and therefore can gain read-write access to all of the physical memory on the device. So that program can then get access to any other program's memory. So yeah, very clever, very interesting. Panda antivirus flagged itself as malware. Uh, 
some interesting um, quality assurance they've got going on there. They you know, didn't try it, like do the testing to find out that it was going to flag itself. Uh, but that caused a bit of embarrassment. So that antivirus software basically killed itself on the computers that, that um, use Panda antivirus. Uh, there's a version of Barbie, Barbie doll, that um, is like a, it's like this new version that's going to come out soon. So I've started like talking about it in the press and it's got some people pretty concerned because the way that it works is it's like this cloud-based AI. So you talk, you, your child or whatever is talking to this Barbie doll, all the recordings of the conversations that are happening around it get uploaded to the, to the cloud and uh, they process that information and in order to provide this like chat feature so that they, you know, your kid can talk to the doll or whatever. But just, you know, just imagine all the ways that that could be used, um, you know, in a privacy invading way, it's, it's insane. Uh, if I was going to maybe create a sleeper cell of like ninja assassins, probably a good way to start that would be to like start um, doing some subtle programming of some chart children. <laughs> I'm kind of joking. But yeah, you just you can think of all the ways that that can be misused. Uh, and the most recent batch of Windows updates includes a, a reboot loop. So if you, um, if, you prov if you actually do the update, it can cause some systems to go into this loop of just rebooting and rebooting and rebooting, which is an argument for doing some testing. If you're in a large enough company, um, you know, it's a good idea to actually test the security updates and um, before you actually just roll it out to all the systems on a network. Obviously, if you're on a small company, it's probably not worth your time to do that kind of testing, but if you're in a large enough company, it might be. And that's all I've got to say about the news.